Hi there and welcome back to our course on understanding medications. In this lesson we'll be aiming to get a general understanding of the first process of pharmacokinetics, specifically the absorption of drugs. There's many ways in which we can administer medications. For instance, if we took an oral tablet, that tablet's going to go down into the stomach, break up into millions of little pieces. It's going to wind up going into the uh, liver. It's going to go into the venous system, into the right side of the heart, into the lungs, into the left side of the heart, and then finally onto systemic arterial circulation where it's going to be able to do its actions. Now that's a long way. But if you administer glycerol trinitrate, or sometimes called nitroglycerin for angina, sublingually or under the tongue, or if you administer it by transdermal patch, or if you administer another medication by suppository in the lower portion of the rectum, all of those modes of administration would go directly into the venous circulation, then it would only have to go into the right side of the heart, onto the lungs, onto the left side of the heart, and then into systemic arterial circulation. And if you injected a drug into the subcutaneous fat that's going to go into the interstitial spaces, and then it's going to go into the venous circulation once again. And if you administered the anesthetic into the lungs, and that goes directly into the lungs, that's going to only need to go from those uh, capillaries, or sometimes called capillaries, and then into the left side of the heart, and then finally into the general circulation. So it has a much shorter distance before it goes into the systemic arterial circulation. Each of those methods of drug administration is going to need to be absorbed into the blood. In fact, the only administration that the drug doesn't need to be absorbed is the intravenous administration because that type of administration places the medication directly into the blood. One thing to note about those different modes of administration is that they are going to vary with respect to the amount of time that the drug takes to get into systemic circulation and therefore their peak concentration in the blood or their concentration max or C max is going to vary as well. For instance, the absorption of orally administered medications is spread over time more than other modes of administration and therefore has quite a low C max Conversely, that same dose of an intravenously administered drug or a drug administered by inhalation into the lungs will have a fairly rapid spike in the C-max. And of course, there's a greater risk of overdose and side effects with the types of administration that enter the systemic circulation the fastest. So the intravenous and inhalation modes of administration are going to have the greater potential for overdose and side effects. Another thing to note right now is that the type of administration that has the greatest concentration max or C max will usually have the steepest fall in the drug concentrations. So the concentration increases more rapidly and the concentration decreases more rapidly. And that is because of the fact that more medication is being metabolized when there's a higher concentration of the drug. In the quiz on this lesson, we're going to take a couple clinical scenarios that are going to reinforce these concepts. We'll see you there.